Okay, we're back here live at Sapphire in Orlando, Florida. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We are ground zero for Sapphire. This is the global communications center where all the action is happening. Vishal Sikha behind us. Earlier we heard the, we uh, broadcasted live the press conference. Co-CEO Jim Snabe and Bill McDermott. And uh, this is where we get all the action. This is where we've been broadcasting for three straight days. This is The Cube. Uh, our guest here is uh, Jamie Erbs, who's the Vice President of Product Management and Product Marketing for VCE. And I'm joined with, by David Floyer, from co-founder of Wikibon.org. David, welcome, Jamie, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much, happy to be here. First time in theCUBE, welcome. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of conversations over the years about SAP, um, and obviously EMC, and EMC World, about VCE, and uh, uh, the world's changed for VCE over the past two years. And yes. This past year in particular, yes. um, a lot of activity, yeah. integration, prefabrication, and obviously software-defined everything is uh, the world, software-defined data center. So these are the mega trends that are driving a lot of uh, infrastructure changes at the data center, right. where complexity is a big problem, and right. David Floyd was pointing that out in their last session. So well, what's the update on VCE from the product standpoint? Give us a quick, uh, uh, intro on the, the update. Well, as you've said, we've, we've undergone a lot of change over the past now three years, a little over three years, and uh, starting from our roots as, as kind of a service integrator and or service uh, oriented company to now being a product company. So some very dramatic uh, change over the past year and a half as we move towards that in becoming a product company. And we came out, we came to market with uh, a series of V-blocks or general purpose workload systems that we that we offer. Uh, the last two, last Last year, 300 and the 700 uh, served us quite well in the market, and we grew pretty dramatically, pushing now a billion dollars in run rate. So we've had a, a, ni a nice run of it. But uh, this year, we started to also think about applications a lot more significantly about applications because as we went into the data center, saw the complexity there, saw the application landscapes, and we quickly realized that the infrastructure really had to adapt to and accommodate the kind of applications that were running there. So we have moved towards as well um, another product category called specialized systems. And the first offering in that category is SAP HANA. So that is a HANA appliance that's designed and made for execution and support uh, delivery of, of uh, SAP HANA, and that's our first entry. Others to come in that space for us, but uh, we find that it's a, it's a great experience for customers in that we're able to offer the VCE experience as a whole as far as our uh, total value proposition in the context of the mixed workload systems that we sell, as well as now HANA right alongside it. So the SAP landscape as a whole can be managed in a very ubiquitous and common way. So we've been talking to a couple of, uh, of your customers uh, during the last uh, day. We talked to Bill Reed, uh, who's your EMC uh, customer. Yes. And we talked to uh, uh, Mr. Lin from West, um, who, who uh, works for, uh, in Philadelphia. And um, they were talking about the importance uh, for their environment of uh, reducing complexity, reducing, virtualizing things, and reducing yes. costs yes. Uh, uh, in those SAP environments, at least right. both these uh, SAP uh, instances. So can you talk a little bit about the process that you go through with a customer uh, in order to uh, fit BCE into their SAP environment? Yes. Yeah. Well, it really starts before the customer engagement and the engineering that we put into the VCE products. Uh, the V-Blocks themselves, we do a high degree of physical engineering from the get-go uh, to make sure that these V-Blocks can be consistently fabricated in factory. So having a, a quality and consistent build that's done from factory that lands in a very predictable way uh, from the onset is, a, is the right starting point that you need for any kind of an application implementation project. So the engineering that we do from a physical side sets the stage. It drives the consistency and standards in the equipment and the, and the elements that go into the V-Block. Then beyond that, we do a, lo a logical build as well. And in that logical build, that's where we're, we're pulling forward the software pieces. We're also 
in the in the deal cycle talking with customers about the application landscapes or portfolios that they have that they expect to run on the V block and we go through an exercise of sizing the V block appropriately of putting together the right configurations in terms of uh, storage subsystem configurations, uh, VMware configurations, the balancing between, you know, say maybe it's a, a uh, physical to virtual implementation. So what percentage of the V-Block should be configured with what we call bare metal to accommodate physical instance of applications running versus how much of their amp application landscape will be virtualized. And in many cases, customers maybe don't quite have the confidence to run some applications in a virtualized model, but if they can implement them side by side in the vBlock environment, watch that operational behavior and, and then move them yeah. as they're ready, yeah. you know, it gives them a nice environment to do that in a predictable and in a uh, Jamie, safe way. Uh, Jamie, SAP is announcing a lot of innovations to their portfolio in the line of business price. Obviously, cloud is the big one, mm -hmm. and VCE really was looking at it as a key enable for these private cloud infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, how are you guys vectoring into that today? Obviously, with the CEOs on live behind, actually they're not live, they're on a, the analyst's the financial press conference, the executive team behind us. You know, and we're hearing kind mm -hmm. of the echo, mm -hmm. loud, HANA. Yes. And so, they got to integrate across their portfolio. That means the data centers need to be retooled. Yes. How do you guys vector into that, that trend that they're putting forward? Yeah. So, we've always believed in you know, choice with customers. Uh, we believe that private cloud has a place in the data center. And if we're able to you know, insert vBlocks in, in an overall construct and in a strategy for customers that allows them to have their applications running in a public cloud model, private cloud model, we have many customers who, uh, for whatever reasons, still have policies, compliance challenges where they, they demand a certain applications to run in a private cloud model. So we allow them to uh, use cloud and as a service types of operating models same operating models they may use against public cloud implementations, but to put, you know, underneath, uh, put the V-Block under the same operating model that they have. So that's, you know, our strategy is basically to fit into that hybrid cloud strategy. And we see that also there are some customers that looked to public cloud implementations for infrastructure, for SAP HANA that we heard about, especially from, from a sandboxing or app dev kind of environment and to use that as a first step and then move towards a production environment that's in more of a controlled and uh, policy managed environment internally. So, so, so um, in, in, in building these systems, how do you deal with um, keeping them up to date? Yeah. Uh, how do you deal with uh, my memory of my environments and operations was that we were forever having yeah. problems in terms of the the uh, microcode level of this piece of hardware and the software level of this. Yes. How do you integrate that and how do you then integrate the hardware along with the level of um, the right level of software mm -hmm. from Oracle and from SAP others, yes. and others. Yeah. yeah, I think you're, you're alluding to release management. And yes, absolutely. Release management <laughs> is quite a challenge and, and I know in my days in operations, the network guys would come forward with, I've got the latest firmware and I'm going to do a change window this weekend. We'd hold our fingers and hope that it wouldn't crash You know, my, my Oracle else. implementation <laughs> and yes, everything else. And then you find out after the fact that conflict with your storage subsystem. And so at VCE, that's uh, exactly one of the investments that we made that you know, when, when there's a purchase of a V-Block, it's not just a, an acquisition of an asset, but there's uh, an, an, a, a service, an embedded service that comes along uh, in, in the context of release management, for example. Uh, we have a team of engineers uh, that full-time are, are getting the latest patches, latest releases, and uh, doing, a, we have a test harness set up with uh, you know, 2,500 plus test, uh, uh, regression tests and such that constantly pound the new uh, software patches, firmware, microcode against the, the combinatorial of all the different vBlock arrangements that we expect. And we provide a quarterly release uh, to our customers with clear instructions about what to install first or dependencies, that sort of thing, so it matches into their change window. Again, we're, we're very sensitive that you know choice and operating model of, of the customer is something we have to fit into. So um, depending on their compliance and their the way that they do change activity, we also have customer advocates, though, and uh, residents that sometimes uh, customers want 
people with cloud management experience in their shop. So we're able to basically drop people on site as well that live with the customer and perform those changes on their behalf. So with some customers, they really kind of ha have a hands-off experience with a V-Block. It's, they you know, bought the asset, we run the asset on their behalf as well. Um, and then we, above the hypervisor um, is where they tend to pick up the responsibility for the release or change management of applications above. But we're constantly looking out for, again, that balancing of, of applications and making sure that the tuning of the system with these advocates and with these residents, that the tuning of the system matches their application landscape. So, so what sort of benefit does that give to an operational people? Mm -hmm. I, I, I was talking to one customer and they were sort of doing a back of a napkin on the uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, benefit. They were thinking they probably would save something in the order of 20% of the, of the people they had mm -hmm. doing this sort of work. Right. Is that, is that uh, the operational people? Yes. Is that, is that what your finding is? Or? Yes, we absolutely are seeing that. And we, we actually work with customers as well um, on a TCO analysis perspective to help them quantify expected savings that they'll see. And we tend to break that down across implementation and across op ongoing operational uh, practices, whether it's in the release area that I talked about or in reduced downtime. Uh, we haven't actually had a SEV-1. I started in July. I haven't witnessed a severity one outage of, of V-Block since I started. And I think the last one that I've heard about was about 18 months ago. That's phenomenal uh, availability that's um, that's in that's baked into the product, you know. So uh, customers really appreciate that. That gives them when you're able to apply your people towards not fighting the fires and the outages every day, but attending to the forward movement of the business. That too, you know, yields savings for for customers. We also have a seamless support model, uh, which around incident management when there is a um, a, a, an issue that's going on, um, a single call. So we're providing a multi-vendor management um, support model that customers can take advantage of and that we provide with every V-Block. And that uh, then allows them as well to uh, reduce the complexity of incident management and um, resolution. So time to resolution is, is expedited and um, and uh, they, don't, they have less uh, phone calling and management across the different ticketing systems, we, we integrate that and provide a seamless experience in that regard as well. Excellent. Yeah. So VCE's been getting a lot of buzz, obviously, on the, um, on the speed side, V-Block in particular, right? So speed to value, yes. we heard 27 months with EMC's IT group. We had one customer, we were talking earlier, and yesterday, mm -hmm. six months they had a real project, and you know, a specific need, but again, six mm -hmm. months, this is unheard of in kind of IT years. Right. I mean, <laughs> six months in IT is like 60 years, IT years. Right. Um, so that's a real issue, right? And the people want more integration, want more prefabricated, but there's still integration involved. What product innovation are you guys driving that's going to mm -hmm. increase the speed to value in yeah. terms of deployments. Right. Gone are the days of the you know old ERP deployments of you know, mm -hmm. you know six year migrations and right. you know gravy train consulting gigs. Yes. So if you want milestones, they want to have quick action. So yes. what are you guys driving on the product yeah. side? Yeah. So so yes, you're right. Time right now. Time from PO to first implementation and putting applications on the V block is around 45 days, 50 days along that time. We have we've seen some very interestingly aggressive projects that have spun up and have started uh, really, you know, time to value is, is hitting within a 45 day mark. Uh, so that's pretty amazing. However, in looking forward, uh, driving simplicity, driving time to value, those are the hallmarks of, of VCE, uh, our philosophies and what we're investing towards. If you go to our booth here at uh, Sapphire, you'll see an interesting prototype that we have a demo running in booth that introduces uh, Tosca. And when you're, when you're dealing with a highly standardized infrastructure environment, uh, the ability to bring in automation tools or standards like Tosca and enable fast implementation of, um, of applications, and in this case, SAP applications, uh, you can imagine the kind of reduction in time uh, to value that we can drive with that. So we're looking at, you know, it's a you know, 60 second implementation of a package. Uh, you know, of course, the packaging work has to be done, um, but we're working with SAP on those fronts. Uh, but you'll have to come and see the demo to see what we're talking about there. But driving now those concepts of standardization, automation, time to value, orchestration. Orchest well, or yeah, orchestration. Top of the top of the we lean, yeah. Now we we lean, we allow customers to have choice in orchestration tools that they use. But um, but you know, Tosca is one of the things that we proved out, and we have a prototype showing. 
Well, my yeah. final question is, David, you have any more questions? I just had one more from your background. Yes. Um, you, mm -hmm. you, you've been in the uh, large, um, large node implementation before, you know, mm -hmm. building 10,000 node implementations of, of systems. Um, so mm -hmm. how, where do you think VCE is in, uh, in applying that to those scale of uh, operations? Yeah, yeah hyperscale Hyper kinds, scale, of, <laughs> kinds yeah. of implementations. Yeah. Uh, very interesting world, and, and yes, in, in my background, I've, I've got a rich history across startups and a uh, large enterprise. I was the CD CTO of EDS Data Center Services, you know, so. Wow, yeah, okay. Hundreds yeah. of thousands of servers <laughs> under management, millions of VMs, you know, that sort of scale. Uh, but that's different because it's a thousand enterprises, you know, independently managed. In a hyperscale environment, uh, scaling points are different. And we do have customers that have that, that sort of a demand. And in our in our product strategy, uh, what we have under, under design and uh, that we're working towards is to allow a hyperscale type model uh, on a trajectory of say compute scale or storage scale. We see different balance depending on the, uh, again it comes back to the applications that you're hosting and running and what what does it mean? How, what there's drives no, your scale? There's not one node for hyperscale, no. is there? No, no yeah. there's not one model. That's uh, I think that's something we've always learned in IT. There's never <laughs> one size fits all, right? But uh, but again, we're looking, yeah. it's, it's my job I think to design in the right levers for expansion, the right levers for understanding capacity uh, uh, expansion points and the right levers for understanding business expansion as well whether it's geographic in nature and working with EMC I, I can't can't ask for a better you know kind of business model to work in because I've got 200 billion dollars of R&D coming into my product line you know so it's a startup culture but with that kind of an R&D uh, backing so I've got you know at my fingertips the Cisco R&D line that comes into into our hands and the EMC and the VMware products so it's I as a matter of fact I, I've got too much <laughs> <laughs> too much choice, you know. It's a nice playground. It is. It is. It's great. So, you know, a couple, now a couple more questions sparked my interest. So, obviously, you have a background in the large environments. You have a background in HP, uh, labs, and, and that yes. kind of environment. Hyperscale is the big buzzword. And yes. So, you know, what's different about VCE now? I mean, the old VCE, you know, as Stu Miniman would say, we can buy motherhood and Apple Pie. VCE is great. But mm -hmm. now with hyperscale going full, full mainstream yeah. in the enterprise, people want hyperscale in the enterprise. Yeah. They're just trying to put it together. So, yeah. what's, the, what's the new innovation? that's driving VC in, right, in, in right. the hyperscale. And well, how, how does it compete on a cost basis with the, some of these hyperscales, which are very low cost? They are, they are. Uh, and, and in my conversation with Stu specifically, I said, can you help us actually in the translation? Because the, most of the hyperscale conversations I've had have been more in the public cloud provider context uh, or you know, companies that are offering um, at scale um, internet-based applications or software kinds of uh, services. And uh, but in the enterprise, it, it, the, the the hyperscale demand has been a little a little less. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that there are value prop things like oh it's low cost. Everybody says that you know. But why you know because of the high degree of standardization, because of the cookie cutter implementations. You know, application design and architecture is very consistent in those worlds, right? So. Do you really see that in an enterprise? So we're, we're trying to look to see the values and the actual advantages of hyperscale. How does that really translate to an enterprise? And that we need to get clarified. And right or now, does I the work go to the cloud for those types there's of a applications? Exactly. Yeah. Is there a balance here? And again, back to that hybrid cloud model. And how can I facilitate, you know, working within the context of a hype of a of a um, hybrid cloud type of environment? But uh, you know, keeping the keeping the, the needs of the enterprise in mind. Mm. So, but I'm very interested to, to learn more and to see hear more feedback from customers about impact of hyperscale specifically to the enterprise. And then I know a little more about design. But right now, like I said, I'm looking for design in the right configuration le levers, design in the right capacity expansion levers in our products so that we're able to, to grow. Flash is definitely a key contribution there, right? So that'll, that'll bring changes. The advances in Cisco and uh, uh, UCS blades, et cetera. So advances in those product lines, I'm looking to, to give us the next advantages in our products. Hey, Jimmy, great, I want to ask you one final question, parting <laughs> question is, uh, obviously um, around the corner is these big mega trends are exploding. Okay, mm -hmm. what, what, what have you learned uh, in your 
at VCE and that, they're, that you're dealing with right now that you can share with the folks about, kind of what do you think about the most on a personal level relative to VCE? What do you, as a product person, you've got to kind of have the 20 mile stare. Yeah. Now you got to, and you have to think tactically at the same time. Right. So what is your big thing that you're thinking the most about? Right, right. Well, for myself, interestingly enough, it's less about the technology because as I said, I've got a $20 billion R&D pipeline to give me lots of technology. My focus is around how can I change the supply chain of the data center? How can I change the way that IT is consumed and to rethink how quickly, again, it's about time to value, how can I continue to push those, um, those hallmarks? And, and so that's really what I'm looking for, the advances. I think the VCE value and what we can contribute in terms of innovation will play into that sort of an outcome of that accelerated time to value of changing the way that, IT, that technology is acquired, implemented, used, life cycle so the entire life cycle assurance you know and keeping up with that to me that's really the contribution that we can make and keep an eye on okay Jimmy Irvs, the Vice President of Product, Product Marketing at VCE. <laughs> VCE's changed in the way things are done with VBlock. Great success. We are here at Ground Zero for Sapphire, live in Orlando. This is SiliconANGLE, we launched the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise, and behind us as we're here, we have the executive team for SAP, who we will meet with shortly, and get some more information, and we are on the ground, getting all the data we can, live in the Global Communications Center in Orlando. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.